Ladies and gentlemen, Lords of the Fallen, not to be confused with Lords of the Fallen, is a game developed by Hexworks that attempts to be Dark Souls 4.5, but doesn't quite hit the mark. It released on the 13th of October 2023 and received a surprising amount of praise despite launching in absolute shambles. The game was, and is, riddled with bugs and horrible design decisions, the former of which are being ironed out with nearly daily patches, but the latter, not so much. Despite that, Lords of the Fallen manages to do some good and some bad. What it does good, it does exceptionally well, to the point where I have to say Miyazaki. Take notes. But what it does bad, it does so horrendously bad that I just want to call the developers from my Croatian phone and have a peaceful chat. The first and most crucial of the positives is the way Lords of the Fallen approaches ranged combat. I tend to have a habit of going for caster type styles of play in games that allow for it, be it a full on wizard or a hybrid that utilizes traditional weapons with the addition of spells that enhance my offense. Take Elden Ring for example. If you wanted to have some sort of Holy Crusader or Battle Mage type character, you'd have to dedicate a slot to a casting item and pick out the spells you'll be scrolling through. On top of that, if you wanted to be centered around dual wielding while being buffed to the brim, you'd have to swap out the weapon in one of your hands to the casting item, do the voodoo tricks and then swap back. Needless to say, it works, but it requires minor steps that create more tedium than enjoyment. Whereas here in Lords of the Fallen, you can use your hand while giving head, if that's your thing. Any variant for ranged, be it throwables, bows or spells, have their own toggle menu, in which you have moves of your choice neatly tied to keys of your choice, allowing you to fluidly alternate between melee and ranged without having to sacrifice one of your hands or switching your playstyle. Meaning that even something as basic as a me strong type character can get great mileage from the system by throwing rocks to amplify the Oonga Boonga theme. Additionally, throwables don't rely on a consumable based system in which you have to stock up on munitions via buying or crafting, but rather it relies on a reskinned Magicka bar, which gives more incentive to at least try the system out, as the feeling of scarcity that often makes us hoard items till the very end of the game does not exist. When it comes to gameplay, I thought that throwables would fall short, not from a utility standpoint, as you can find a throwable version of every damage type, more so from a fluidity standpoint, but as it turns out, toggling into ranged is a very smooth transition that comes with a few bonuses, like not having to cycle through your quick access items, more reliable free aim accuracy and being able to switch the type of throwable. And it only gets better with magic. Lords of the Fallen is a far more enjoyable experience when you dip your toes into one of the magic attributes as a wide array of weapons scale from both a physical attribute like strength and agility and an arcane one like radiance and inferno, giving you the best of close quarters and ranged combat without any real downsides. In fact, going pure Grolog the Destroyer will make you miss out on all the cool flashy stuff, as there are no Ashes of War or any cool abilities to weapons on their own. Whereas with magic, there's no shortage of visually satisfying spells in either of the magic types, those being fire, holy, and calm. Spells stick rather close damage-wise to your melee counterpart, so one rarely outshines the other. When it does, it's either due to a specific combination of things, or due to a powerful spell. By the time your spells start trivializing what is supposed to be challenging encounters, your melee options will be of similar potence so you never really feel like you're funneled into focusing on one style of play. Alas, most of the offensive spells have long cast times that are near impossible to weave into melee strings, and a lot of the spells have underwhelming or non-existent sound effects. Really, nigga? Despite that, the range system gets a hog, which leads us Ready. into melee. Lords of the Fallen has some refreshing ideas when it comes to swinging your damage sticks, but ultimately, they fall short. For the sake of fairness, I'll start with something I do like, and that's weapon Hold designs. There. A lot of the weapons look great. I oftentimes found myself wanting to respec my build just so that I can get the most out of some sick or abominable stick. And that's good, because there is no other incentive to try a lot of the weapons out. In Elden Ring, for example, if you like using spears and you find a new one, you have incentive to try it out because it could have a different moveset, a unique Ash of War, or a different heavy attack. Here, if you used one axe, you used them all. 
If you used one dagger, you used them all. Every category is limited to its one moveset. And since there are no skills or anything inherently unique to weapons, your only reason to ditch your current stick for a different one is better numbers. And I reckon that's the case because Lords of the Fallen has this interesting, albeit underwhelming system that allows you to dynamically string movesets. If you hold a weapon with one hand, you get a 5 attack long string that is different to the one you would get if you were holding the weapon two-handed. And at any moment during the string, you can switch your holding position to insert an attack from the other stance, without interrupting your string's continuity. You can do the same with mixing in heavy attacks between light attacks, but that's more of a novelty concept that has no merit, as heavy attacks deal the same damage as light attacks, unless charged. It's nice that there's a way to be actively involved in combat by doing something more than just left clicking, but ultimately, I didn't find any use for this system. On top of that, the sound effects for weapons severely lack impact, especially on the big hitters. So artistically speaking, the weapons look great, but they're all just sticks that move in accordance to their categories with flimsy sound effects and no unique flair. That's a definitive... But maybe it's not so much about what the weapons can do for you, but rather what you can do for the weapons. What? In Lords of the Fallen, you can socket up to three runes into any of your weapons to synergize them with the build. I took my fire sword, stacked ignite runes on it, and now it releases fire farts with most hits. I then pair that with a fire-related equipment and voila, I'm a peaceful protester. Or better yet, I find a pendant that makes holy damage deal posture damage and then double down on that approach with all the appropriate gear, thus becoming the Herald of Lightning. I really like exploiting the posture system in this game. The information is conveyed clearly and subduing an enemy is consistent, as kicking in this game is very responsive, something I could never say about Dark Souls. Runes are a nice system that allows for some interesting build variety, but ultimately, it's limited. You can only socket runes of a fitting shape, which are determined by the weapon's scaling attributes. For example, I had two pickaxes that inherently deal poison damage, so I thought I should slap on some poison build-up runes and then pair that with a ring that procs bleed alongside poison. Alas, because the weapon skills from Radiance and Inferno, I have to use those runes, with only the third slot being a pick whatever option, where I can slap on the poison rune that belongs to Agility. I reckon this isn't the developers limiting fun because of incompetence, but more so because it's their way of balancing PvP. All things considered though, I'd say build variety is deserving of a hog. The only thing that elevates build variety even further is drip. Lords of the Fallen is the best Fashion Souls game I have played thus far. There is no shortage of cool armor pieces to thematically fit any build you're going for. And on top of that, you have more input in your character's expression with the option of switching colors around. I had a blast playing as my fireboy who burned off his hands, and for that, Drip gets a POG. But this is where the poggy is no longer so woggy. Aesthetically speaking, the world of Lords of the Fallen is captivating. I personally take no interest in gothic dark fantasy type settings, but some areas look good and have mesmerizing vistas, some areas are mind-numbingly boring, and some are proof that the voices are real and you should listen to them. In a vacuum, I generally liked going through most areas, thanks to some of the puzzles and how the normal world seamlessly connects to the spooky Coomer world, which is very interesting and well executed. At any moment, you can whip out your lamp and see what the homies from the other side are up to. Then you can use that information to find all sorts of goodies. It's in the combative gameplay department that things start feeling kinda scuffed. Initially, from a design standpoint, the experience was quite horrendous. Enemy density was absurd, and archers could hit you from ranges you literally could do nothing against. Fortunately, these things have been mended, but their existence in the first place is a clear indicator that there is no concrete vision behind the combat. And this rings true throughout the game, as the staple of Souls-like games, which is challenge, is nowhere to be found. Instead, the game actively throws as much bullshit as it can at you because making a player die is what it means to be a Souls-like, or so Hexworks think. 
But I think we can all agree that there is a difference between being slowed down due to a challenging encounter you're under-equipped for, and a cheap tactic that cannot be countered without prerequisite knowledge, or a cheap tactic that involves throwing as many enemies as possible to overwhelm you by stunlocking you, or staggering you out of non-immediate moves. Spamming left clicks to get rid of fodder while dodging ranged attacks that magnetize to your peachy booty cheeks is not challenging, nor is it fun. It's just annoying. Oh, sorry. A visually formidable world sullied by annoying engagements is... Bruh. But surely, the bosses are challenging, right? Well, the bosses in Lords of the Fallen are a mixed bag. There's bosses that become elite enemies not even 4 minutes after you kill them, meaning the introductionary encounter cannot be challenging or mechanically intense, as that wouldn't translate well into continuous encounters. Then there's bosses that come with the supreme challenge of not falling asleep, as they have mind-numbing look-at-me phases that you can't do anything about except on one single specific occasion. And then you have bosses that are actually quite decent, both in presentation and mechanics. What? I only found the first boss, Pieta, and the Umbral Ending boss to be challenging, whereas I got through the rest on the first attempt. Bosses, get a... I wish they were more challenging so I could engage with the mechanics more, but sadly, the only way to get more challenge is by going into New Game Plus. Originally, New Game Plus would have all bonfires, or vestiges as they're called, removed. Not in the sense that you start the game and can't travel wherever, that's to be expected, but in the sense that they don't exist. You only got the main hub of bonfire, shrine of a deer bonfire, and the one you created with the build a bonfire system of which you can only have one active at any given time. Now this game is not small. Going from the hub to somewhere like Lower Calraf would take you tens of minutes. And if you happen to die to some of the game's cheap tactics before building a bonfire, you'd have to trek that ground all over again. Since receiving backlash, the devs have implemented some changes, making their vision a more gradual enroachment. But I still don't see convenience being a fair trade-off for an increased difficulty. Especially when you take into consideration that there is potential the game will have events. In fact, Lords of the Fallen did have an event for Halloween that required you find pumpkins in 5 different locations, which was followed by a reskinned boss and awarded you a cool helmet that increases your discovery rate. That alone gives me more incentive to never go into New Game Plus as tedious running would only waste my time. The build a bonfire system seemed cool to me at first, you know, something like a stake of America that you have to place yourself, but the way it's implemented had me entirely confused when it's worthy of using. It requires a consumable, so you can't just erect concubines all willy-nilly, and it can only be done on umbral flower beds. With that in mind, you'd expect the developers to meticulously place the flower beds before challenging encounters, or near to branching paths, right? As a way of hinting at more intense encounters to come. But no. Flower beds genuinely feel procedurally generated. You get one before a boss, you get one from the boss, and you get one after the boss. Or better yet, you get one that is 20 steps from a different one that itself is 20 steps from a different one. Their value is only apparent in hindsight as the game utterly fails to indicate any on its own. Events are good for longevity, something a lot of Souls-likes don't have, so that definitely gets a POG. But New Game Plus and Build a Bonfire? Mm. Before we get to the online aspects, a quick word from our sponsor, Opajack. <gasps> Those footsteps in this no. Dude, you gotta put that in your review. No. Oh look, it even tracks! Oh my god, dude, realistic no. physics, Sergey! Put in the review. No. I was excited for the co-op of Lords of the Fallen. I genuinely thought this would be a game where I can play from start to finish with my friend. And that's completely my fault. I technically can go from start to finish, as mechanically that is possible, but I won't be able to pick up any curated loot, that being weapons, armors, and most importantly, the Estus Shard equivalent to upgrade my Heelys. So by all means, it's a botched co-op experience. But when it comes to helping someone get through an area or multiple, the system is sufficient. The only downside is that you have to pray really hard. Pray that you don't get a connection loss screen 10 times in a row, and pray that when the connection is established, it isn't with someone on the other side of the planet. 
Connectivity issues naturally extend into PvP, which I'd say sucks in general. I don't care much for PvP at all in these types of games, and only enjoyed it in Dark Souls 2. You invade me, I eradicate you and move on. Or, you invade me, you send me to the Shadow Realm with one arrow, and I call you a STUPID NE- I really don't care for it. Especially when as an invader, you have to kill the host twice. Because when the host dies in the normal world, they're resurrected in the Coomer world. One thing I do like in relation to multiplayer is red lamps that represent players who died in their world. Interacting with them highlights the enemy responsible for their demise, that upon death drops a covenant currency. I like this because of the silly names you can see, and because the lamps animation looks like the disintegrating emoji meme. But as a whole, multiplayer is a Pippi und Kaki speedrun. The sound design is very boneless. That shit is fucking trash, dog. Get the fuck. There's a severe lack of gravitas, especially on some boss fights, as they will do a powerful move that by all means is a hard hitter, but the audio does not reflect that in the slightest. The same goes for voice acting. It's just bad. It's a long one, Pete. And on occasion, really bad. Fuck. Parries in Lords of the Fallen work similarly to Sekiro and Lies of P, meaning that a parry doesn't stop an enemy's combo, but does damage their posture. That, in my opinion, is good, especially since most of the animations are decent enough to react to. However, you still get punished for parrying by receiving wither damage, and that is dumb. Three. Traditionally, resting at a bonfire gives you some reset screen that keeps you grounded in the universe. I like seeing the different takes games have on this. Here in Lords of the Fallen, you get a loading screen, and it never fails to feel janky or jarring. Four. Side quests suffer from the same terrible design that plagues every FromSoft game, wherein you have to figure shit out based on the smell of your farts, without any cohesive thread to follow opening a door or going up an elevator before completing some vague steps that are not clearly indicated can lock you out of content because quest design. Lastly, inventory is a complete mess. There's no clear separation or sorting of any kind. You have to sift through a sea of similar looking items just to find something you're looking for. On top of that, there is an inventory limit that could hard lock you out of progressing in the game. A month after release, this has been addressed to some degree, but I still have to mention it, as such retarded design decisions should not make it into a triple A priced product to begin with. As for story, I think it's sufficient and serves its purpose nicely. I generally manage to follow on threads and understand more or less the general conflicts and animosities without a long lore video, so story gets a hog. Ultimately, Lords of the Fallen is the game equivalent of a Coomer. Its strengths are really strong and deserve praise, but its weaknesses are unacceptable for the asking price. A lot of the issues I talked about could very well be patched out as the developers get more time to figure out what it is they even want to achieve, but as it stands, Lords of the Fallen is a decent game that has the price of a gem, but the quality of a white girl's happy crystal. Not including the nitpicks, we have 5 pogs and 6 bras, making the final rating for Lords of the Fallen a out of 10. That's about it, don't forget to slap like, slap wife, it's Karub and a good name.